guys, it's your girl Lele Pons with a brand new episode of Best Kept Secrets. Happy New Year! I hope your New Year's was amazing. You had a lot of fun. I actually got my first kiss ever on my New Year's. This was the first time that I ever kissed somebody. When everybody's like, "Oh, Happy New Year!" This is my first time ever. I am 24. Wow, I'm 24 years old in this first time. But we're just getting started out in this new year. I hope it's gonna be the the best year because last year was intense. So maybe you have a secret that you've been holding on to and you're looking for a fresh start and want to talk to somebody. Well, why not be a guest on the show? It's really simple. All you have to do is head to shots.com slash secrets and fill out the forms to submit. Remember, all the callers use different names. There's not their names and are absolutely anonymous. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. As I told you guys before, I was born in Venezuela and moved to Miami when I was five years old. I went to school. I had a hard time learning English. And then I started making vines when I was 16 in high school. I feel like that's the time when most people get their first job, you know, but mine, mine was like Vine. Everybody actually in school was like, that's not a job. That's so stupid. And I remember that. And it was hard for me to relate to people when they talked about like the different jobs they got and everything. Cause I was like, my God, like this is not even a job. This is just like a hobby, you know, in, in, in all of them had the bad ones, the hard ones, the crazy ones, because I've only had this one job. So I don't know even what category it is. Trust me. I've had bad days too, though, and hard days and crazy days more than I can count but it's just different I don't know how many people who started working at 16 and still have the same job you know and I, I know many people started with something and then now they're like woof they're huge and doing something they're basically my one of my best friends is a doctor and she was a waitress in the beginning so it's amazing but you know what if I hadn't been successful on Vine I most likely would have been like something like working in the Everglades I've always wanted to work on the Everglades I would have probably been doing stuff in Broadway I wanted to be a singer I wanted to be an opera singer when I was when I was uh, younger so I would definitely be doing something completely different but you know life uh, takes you in a different turn and now we're in this podcast Today, my two callers both have secrets that they are keeping from the people they work with. Our first caller, Karen, works as a Reiki healer, but has been dealing with some dark forces behind her company's back. Therefore, let's get our first caller, Karen, on the line. Hi, Karen. Hi. How are you? What is your best kept secret? Um, well, my best kept secret is I actually perform exorcisms on people. Stop it. So <laughs> yeah. cool. I love that. <laughs> Wait, how does that work? Well, it, so I'm a Reiki practitioner and it basically started, I, I started this company and I've done Reiki since I was a kid, except I didn't know what it was. It's just kind of like a gift that I've had. Um, so I started with this company and I, I started doing it basically for a living and then just kind of realized that I could perform exorcisms on people without even like knowing it. It just started happening. So it was so weird. Wow. Wait, so, so when did you start doing this? And what is Reiki? Okay, so Reiki is basically just like energy healing. So you send like love and light through your hands and it basically can clear someone of like any negativity. Um, but yeah, so that's basically what Reiki is. And uh yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And how how do you do it? Like, how do you have to go? Do you have to go to school to do it? Is it, is it something that happened naturally? How did it happen? Yep. Yeah, actually, like I said, I've kind of naturally done it since I was a child. But but I did go to school to get my Reiki practitioner's license. And um, yeah. And so I work for for basically a, a holistic health company doing Reiki on people. And so they come to me basically if they're you know, if they're feeling sad or if they're having any kind of physical ailments or issues. And then we go from there. And sometimes it just like randomly turns into an exorcism. <laughs> and how is that? That's so scary. Like, how was your first experience with with exorcism? Well, it's it's not really like what you see in the movies, but it kind of surprised me and it still surprises me. But I can't I can't actually like tell my coworkers about it because they get they're like super kind of by the book and they get a little freaked out. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so basically if I start kind of like, you know, running my hands over someone to try to feel the energy and to feel kind of where it's going, I'll just kind of sense like a, 
I don't dark say like energy darkness but like a negative kind of like force and so I try to just like tap into that but sometimes you know I I think it kind of like boomerangs back to the person and they 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 start like kind of showing signs of like e- exorcism so I don't know I've just started to do research because it kind of freaked me out too yeah no that's that's kind of that's crazy I, that that's something that like it's dangerous to to fuck with you know I hope you I hope it it doesn't like transfer seriously I have to like constantly sage myself and like I have like Palo Santo and like rose quartz all over exactly, my house Palo that's Santo, yeah. home, you know? so. and how uh, like how did you how did you know what to do like have you is there like a book like what did you do well I kind what of, do you do <laughs> so since it's since it's happened the first time I joined a few like online chats to uh, to get some information because I honestly like I had no idea you know and um but some of it's also intuitive. So I just kind of, if I felt like the dark darkness coming up, then I would kind of just like intuitively try to clear it just with Reiki methods. But sometimes like people like, like, for example, this one person, like he, he sat straight up and he just started like shaking. <laughs> so I didn't, I had to stop the session. I didn't know what to do. What and the I, fuck? That's like, scary. Like for it lasted for like 30 seconds. And then like, I kind of like just kind of chilled out for a minute and just asked him if he was okay. And then he didn't even remember it. Oh no. And then like two days later he called me and he was like, I have never felt this good. And so like, I don't really know. Oh wow. You're yeah. good. <laughs> what is an exorcism like? Like, is it like what you, you said it's not what you see in movies. So what is it? Well, it's like, it's kind of different for every person but for for the most part it's just like like i said it it, it kind of just seems like a like a dark force field like without seem, seeming so like sci-fi just like that's around the person or like it, that it's inside the person or they have like personal demons that they're maybe struggling with a fear or an anxiety or like um actually sometimes i, I almost feel like it's from a past life like it's from their oh, wow. cards or something so is exorcism part of Reiki? No, it is not no. part of Reiki. As a matter of fact, I would if like if any of my coworkers knew I was like calling, they they would just like disown me probably because no, it's not something that's talked about. Like Reiki is, you know, foo foo butterflies positivity. Basically you're you're flooding the person with love and light to like, you know, to heal, which I mean, I honestly like what's the difference in that and like an exorcism, I have no idea. So I just don't know. <laughs> Yeah. And have you seen anything really scary or freaky? Like, um, do they talk, you know, like in the voices or nothing like that? Just well, yeah, actually, like one, oh, wow. one time this guy. So he came and he said that he had been dealing with some addictions. Um, I think he said he was like he was in pretty heavily into like gambling and some alcohol addictions. But he actually started talking in a different language. <laughs> what <laughs> for yeah for like a whole minute and I was trying to ask him questions and he was talking in a different language <laughs> and so I had to stop the session and I was once again I was like just trying to kind of bless his like his energy field because I don't want that to like transfer to yeah. me. did you believe in in possessions before you actually witnessed it no no <laughs> wow well, and have you told anyone about these exorcisms so I tried to tell like my coworkers early on because I thought it was something that could be common, like with energy work, but they they kind of like blew me off. And so I, I haven't really said anything since. I think I'm just going to have to keep because I'm kind of new at the company. Yeah. And if they find out, do you think they will like fire you? Probably. <laughs> or they just maybe like would look down upon it. I'm not really sure. But I, th- I think for now, I'm probably going to just kind of keep it under wraps because it's so weird. Yeah, it's that's really kind of. That's pretty fucking gnarly. Yeah. 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 This is like really intense. It just shows, and I believe in this stuff, shows that like, you know, there's as there's good in the world, there's also evil. And it's so funny is like, I never, I always just kind of believed in the good before, but I really do. Like, this has kind of opened my eyes to like some scary shit. So I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But, they, but they, seriously, like, it's good to, for people to know that. Like, like, yes. don't fuck with, don't fuck with like Ouija boards. Don't fuck with shit seriously. like that. And protect yourself and have positive thoughts because that's so important, you know, and like crystals, yeah. they're pretty awesome to sage and stuff and clear your space because it's just, you know, I mean, who knows, really? 
Exactly. No, I uh, thank you so much. Seriously, I hope talking to me made you feel a little bit better because that's a lot to to handle. <laughs> that's a lot to take in. <laughs> if anything happens, I, come back, please. If you see some like flying, anything like that, please come back. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye. You know, guys, I've said it before. Uh, like I just said, as there are great things in the world, there are also evil in the world. There's a lot of like, you know, unsaid things that I do believe in, like exorcism, like the devil. Obviously, I think it exists. You know, I don't I don't I, I hate it. <laughs> I, I've i never seen or, you know, or, you know, heard of an exorcism like personally of like one of like close people. But. I know it exists and we can't just like ignore it. And it could be anything. Like she said, it could also be like just darkness in you, you know? And I know a lot of people have darkness in them and need a little bit of healing. Now I, I, I've never gone to someone to heal me. I usually, you know, therapy. That's what I do. But, uh, Everybody does it differently. And, you know, um, I'm happy that she's helped people. If she helps people, that's amazing. As she, as she said, one of the people were like, hey, I've never felt so good, which is great. So she should keep doing what she's doing. I salute that. All right, guys, I don't know about you, but this gave me goosebumps. Uh, I'm going to go sage myself right now, but I'll be back right after this quick break. Okay, guys, we're back, and I'm still a little bit irked out by the last call, so I'm hoping our next caller, Carly's Secret, is a bit less demonic. Let's give her a call. Hi, Carly. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I like your voice. It's very, like, soft and, like, ra- do you have, like, a raspy voice? Um, You know, I've been feeling a little under the weather, so it's probably, like, one of those sexy cold things. Well, it's very sexy. Maybe it's not raspy, <laughs> actually, now that I hear it, but um, you sound cool. I don't know. I like your voice. Thank you. I like yours, too. Thank you. Um, so we're dying to know what is your best kept secret? Okay, so I have a virtual assistant that I hired, and he does pretty much my entire job, um, which is... Oh, really? Do you pay him? Yeah, I pay him, and... I pay him pretty well. I mean, he lives in New Zealand, so he makes pretty good wages for what I pay him there. Um, okay. But the only problem is that my job doesn't actually know that I have a virtual assistant. <laughs> um, okay. So they think I'm just like killing it right now and doing a really good job. And they actually just gave me a raise, but they have no What, what do you do idea. for a living? Just so I... I'm a copywriter, but I had to do some like data entry was one of the things that they added on to me. And it was just, I'm terrible at typing. I just wanted somebody else to do it. So I just found somebody on fire and then he did a really good job. And I was like, well, I can just start giving him more stuff to do. And now he's doing like 90% of my job. Wow. 90%. How long have you been um, at your job for? Um, I've been at my job for four years, but I've been using him for like a year. Oh, okay. So you're okay. Not, not, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't justify anything, but you know, like you can say that you've been working for three years. Uh, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. For the first three years I was doing my job. And I wonder, how did you get the idea? Like in the first place? A friend of mine said that they had done it for like a side job that they had. They were like, oh yeah, I just hired somebody from and I was like, what's her? And they're like, oh, it's just like a site where people say that they'll do something. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to see what else is on there. So, um, oh, wow. Yeah. So people are willing to do pretty much anything. So I was like, let me just see if somebody can do this data entry part, which I'm terrible at. And next thing you know. And voila. Yeah. Do you need an assistant because you have too much work to do or do you just not want to do the work like it started out that I just was bad at that part so I was like well let me just focus on what I'm good at because I want to be a copywriter and I don't want to do this data entry stuff and then it just got to be like I started giving him more things and he was doing a really good job and he was happy that I was paying him it was like the more he did the less I had to do and then somewhere along the way it just became like I'm basically doing nothing and he's doing everything (laughs) Oh, and like, does your boss know that you're like, you're doing a little bit too much great work? Like, 
Like, wow, you work so much. Well, that's the thing. My boss gave me a raise and was like, you know, I just really appreciate the extra time that you've been putting in and the extra effort. And I know we put a lot on your plate and you just kind of stepped up to the plate with no complaints. And I mean, I feel a little guilty, but it also is. Yeah, but you feel even though you feel guilty, you have to know that you're giving somebody work. Yeah, that's the way I look at it is like, well, he's making a living. I'm making a living. You know, I'm paying him fair. It's not like I'm ripping him off. Exactly. Well, what do you think your boss would do if he found out that you had a virtual assistant? Oh, my God. He'd fire me right away. I mean, I'm, the assistant has access to my email, which they're not supposed to have. And it's there's probably so many rules I'm breaking. Have you ever had any close calls getting caught at work? Oh, my God. Yes. In the very beginning, I just kind of, you know, I wasn't really used to it. I had never done it before. And since I gave him access to my email account, he sent out an email under my name. But at the bottom, he signed his name. And, you know, thankfully, I caught it really quickly. Oh, no. Yeah, I just followed up with a reply all and I kind of like tried to glaze over it. But yeah, it was definitely I was sweating it out. Good thing that was the only time that was a that was a quick one. Thank thank God you 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 caught it, though. Yeah, you caught it. Yeah. I mean, he had another one where it was like a typo. That another he, one. Jeez. Yeah, that one wasn't as bad as signing his name. But yeah, he had a pretty bad typo. And the client was kind of like, what? And I had to just like come up with a quick way to cover it up. But yeah, shit like that has happened to me. Um, it has things like that has happened to me before when I cheat on my test. Sometimes uh, I, I actually had someone that to do. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to say that because people do know who I am. So <laughs> last question I have, because I'm curious, what do you do with all the free time that you have because of, you know, your assistant? I mean, I do pretty much whatever I want. Oh, my I God. Started playing tennis. Oh, my gosh. it's It sounds so bad when I say it out loud. But, yeah, I started playing tennis with my friends. I mean, I go on hikes. I'm on TikTok. I love your TikToks. I love that. Um, Thank yeah, you but, so much. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, it's all remote. Like, all everyone's remote now, so it's kind of like, all right, well, nobody's keeping tabs on me, and... And it's worked for a year. So yeah, right. there's no reason why it's not going to keep on working. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, yeah, I, I kind of just at this point wish that I could be honest about it. And you know, if I got promoted, then I could hire my virtual assistant on and then we all just work together. But, you know, right now it's like I'm making enough money. It's a little complicated. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's amazing. Good for yeah. you. I mean, thanks. It feels good to tell somebody. Don't listen to me. Just, you know what? You're just here to tell me your secret and I'm here not to judge. And I understand because if I had the opportunity, if anybody would have the opportunity and everything is going well, then fuck it. I really, that means a lot. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much for telling us uh, your secret and sharing this with us in the audience. Means Thank a lot, you. and hopefully next time you bring your 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 assistant to see how he feels. Oh, that would be amazing! I know he follows you on TikTok too. Oh, okay. I I, I can't say I'm gonna follow him back because I can't, <laughs> or you. I can't <laughs> because I don't want people to know who you are. But uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, you know, this is not that different from when we used to actually be in school and we used to use somebody else to do our homework, or you know give us the answers in a test. It's kind of the same thing, but you know what? We've done it. I've done it once, once, twice, three times, four times. I don't know. A lot in my life. And you know, if it works, she's giving this person money. He's working. She's working. The boss is obviously happy. It is a little bit of a cheating, but you know what? If it doesn't hurt anybody, this is a safe place. No judging. Thank you for telling us the secret. Honestly, I hope that she never gets caught. Because that is going to be pretty fucking embarrassing. So, hope they're both going to be safe from this. And that was another crazy call. <laughs> I want to thank Karen for sharing her story with us. I honestly cannot believe or imagine how I would feel if I was supposed to be laying my hands on someone to help them heal. And then suddenly, like, some other force and darkness comes and started speaking in different languages. 
that's some scary shit. Let me tell you right there. Because like, I don't know if you guys have seen the scary movies, um, Possession, The Exorcist. Uh, these movies, like, that, that shit is real. Like, I believe in that. So I get away from that stuff. Like, even when I'm sleeping and I hear, like, a noise, that's why I like, st- I like to play stuff in the background. I don't want to hear anything. I'm like, no, I'm not ready to be possessed. So, yeah, that's, that shit freaks me out. I've always felt like that people shouldn't fuck around with that spirit as well. Like, you know, with the Ouija board and everything. And I think Karen's call is a good example of why you shouldn't. And there are some dark forces out there. So I'm really glad Karen has found a way to help people by performing those exorcisms. I don't know. From what I've seen, they must be so terrifying to be a part of. And one thing's for sure, I don't think Reiki Healer is the job for me. Now, Carly, our second caller, at first it sounds like she's really got things figured out. But ethically, it's probably not the right thing to do. But if she's not hurting anybody, what's the problem with that, you know? In fact, she's actually helping someone. People need work right now, especially with COVID and everything and everything shutting down and layoffs. And she's paying her assistant a good wage, which is more than a lot of big corporations who outsource work can say. So I hope that she doesn't get caught because I have to admit, if, if it was me, I would be terrified to be found out. She's put a lot of trust in this guy on the other side of the world that she's never even met. And he has access to all her emails and who knows what kind of personal and business information. She even mentioned that there was a, a time that he accidentally signed his own name on one of her emails. So she must know how easy it is for her to get caught and something to slip in her job and they find what's going on for real. But even the job says that they're doing great and they're proud of her. So even like everyone's happy here. So there's no problem. It must be so stressful, though, for her to keep this secret and trusting her virtual assistant to keep it, too. Which brings me to the question of the week. Have you ever cheated on a test? Like I've said earlier, I have done this once or twice or 15 times, but I know a lot of my friends who didn't want to take any risks because they were so nervous about being caught by the teacher, which you guys did great. Very smart. So I want to hear from you guys to find out which is more common, to cheat or not to cheat. Let me know on my Instagram at Lelepons. That's our show for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. And don't forget to join me back here next Wednesday for some more best kept secrets. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Bum, bum. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebaj. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week. <laughs>